My name is Tom Boyce. I am a UK-based artist currently working in the Midlands. Much of my work is about place and the exploration of place through mostly painting, but also drawing and sometimes printmaking techniques. Uh, I'm interested in the exploration between abstraction and semi-abstraction and figurative work, uh, mainly influenced by various American artists, uh, but also lots of different, different uh, sources. Uh, my background is based in painting mainly, but also um, uh, mainly focused on sort of traditional um, sort of art schooling. So I studied in Aberystwyth, which is a small place in a small art school in West Wales. Uh, and much of my training was based on drawing, really, and and learning how to uh, learning how to understand the basics and the fundamental aspects of that. So to things like life drawing and, and what's called measure drawing, which is architectural drawing in some ways. Yeah, but I was also always interested in travel and place and, and explore, explore, exploring these things in my work. Um, so that was something that was always kind of occurring in throughout my the thread of my work as I sort of developed it over time. Uh, and I think some of that was potentially down to my interest in travel and the stories my dad used to tell me when, when I was younger of him traveling around the world for his work and the fact that I've got family in different places around the world all, all appealed to me and, and I thought if I can make work about that then that fuses those two interests together. Uh, so I think that's how I kind of see my work and see my um, sort of outlook on the world. Um, it's not just uh, places near and far but it's also places very close to home such as my studio. I'm also interested in interiors uh, exteriors, anything that's visually interesting to me is something that I'll always try and depict in my work. Um, and that is often figurative, loosely figurative, but also, like I said, semi-abstract uh, based stuff, uh, often void of the figure. Um, I'm not really interested in depicting the figure in my work. Some people that's, some people feel like that's almost uh, um, strange in some ways, but it's, it's a feature that I always kind of um, notice and, and feel like that my work doesn't really need. Um, more often than not. Um, uh, so my art was always kind of a way in which, it, which I wanted to reflect how I see certain events of the world. Uh, some of them might be quite exotic to me, so places that are really far away from where I'm based in the UK. Uh, but all of these mainly contain key things such as light, perspective, uh, shadows. And because, of sh because often they contain shadows, they often appear with these kind of sunlit skies and things and that's something that I've always been interested in even as a young boy I remember being interested in kind of being outside and, and looking at shadows and the way that they cast cast across things and that's something that I've kind of contained uh, continue to explore and, ret and have constantly been interested in retaining in my work and it's something I've naturally drawn to I think um, and I think some of that a lot of that actually is is, is my interest it comes from my interest in the American figurative artist Edward Hopper uh, I was always interested in how he could create, create these kind of si elements of silent theatre in his pictures. Often they contained a single figure, a lonely figure, uh, and, and a lot of that kind of extreme light and cinema in his in his work really appealed to me and was something I was kind of really drawn to. And I was almost obsessed by his work, especially when I was a student. I'd, a lot of my work became quite figurative because of that. But I was always interested in trying to loosen it up and trying to make it a little bit more abstract in its approach. And that led me to the work of artists such as Richard Diebenkorn, another American artist who, again, I became quite obsessed by, and I continue to sort of explore his work quite a lot, mostly his figurative stuff, but also his abstract work. Uh, and he was obsessed. He, 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 he led me to became, becoming obsessed with this kind of a, approach of exploring the abstracts and the figurative and this kind of line between the two and trying to explore one whilst I was also exploring the other. And, and you know, I always find if I go more than one way over the other, it, it doesn't quite work for me. So it's something I'm continuing to learn and to try and develop in my own practice. Um, other artists I've always been drawn to, um, artists such as de Kooning, Wayne Thiebaud, um, another artist called Ben Aronson, who's another American artist I've, I've actually become um, quite interested in over the past few years and I've been in communication with. So all of these people definitely influence me and, and kind of, and there's, there's probably many more as well. And I think all of, all of us, none of us, none of, no artist exi uh, work in, exists in a vacuum. We all, we're all very much influenced by one another. And I continue to try and um, see who they are and find them and try and incorporate in my, into my work and see what it is that I like about them to try and help me gain things in my own practice. Um, 
And so that, that has essentially led me into creating a kind of process of working quite small in some ways, because I'll try to explore these kind of figurative elements by making them as abstract as possible. So I worked really small on board and with quite sort of, um, in a, in a process that basically led me to be quite, uh, not particularly careful with my work and that, that probably doesn't sound right, but a bit more carefree with my approach so that I wasn't I was prepared to make mistakes. I was pre prepared to be quite loose and, and not too precious about the materials I was working with. I also had very little money at the time, so I would work on cheap pieces of offcuts of board and, and that led me to working on NDF board, which is something that I continue to do now and I love to work on. I often try and work on canvas, but it, it never kind of works for me. I like that kind of smooth, hard surface that MDF brings and, and things like plywood as well is also quite nice to work on. Um, but I, I prepare the surface so it's really nice and smooth to work on. And then I kind of paint over the top of, of that. And I produce probably 10 at once. Um, and that allows me to kind of be quite loose and free with my pre process. And I'm prepared to make mistakes. And perhaps one in 10 of those it progresses to a, a final painting, a finished painting, but I want to make sure that I'm not too focused on one painting as such. If I made one large painting over the course of months, that would not work for me. Um, I would just become, you know, psychologically, it wouldn't quite work for me. So um, that's kind of the way I work. And, and fortunately for me, I, I had a bit of a lucky break where I, I was uh, participated on a, a program called Sky Landscape. Landscape Artist of the Year, which is a TV program in the UK that's also shown around the world, actually. Um, and uh, I won that in 2017, which really gave me lots of exposure and allowed me to really explore my practice fully. Um, I'm not too sure that without that break, I would have been able to do what I do and continue to have the confidence, but also the uh, um, sort of a, uh, ability to be able to be seen by people who perhaps otherwise wouldn't see my work. So I'm thankful for that opportunity and I'm trying to continue to make the most of that. Uh, and that really taught me lots of things, lots of really important things about my own practice and myself as an artist. Um, and it's something that I continue to try and uh, use to help me. But I, I don't want to be too reliant on it. I want to, my art to speak for itself. Um, and at the minute, I'm still continuing to develop my practice. I'm still trying to continue to try and explore things uh, through place and travel. Um, I, I continue to build up a body of work currently, working on stuff mainly from a trip to the US last year, which I was fortunate enough to do. Um, so much of my work is based on that, but I'm also constantly looking for new sources and new materials. I, I work in sketchbooks and I fill tons of sketchbooks. So I'm constantly, I've constantly got a source of material. It's just finding time to make sure that I can continue to use that and to make work from it. So it's, it's, I'm always trying to be busy and keep, keep working and, and keep finding routes into making exciting work, hopefully. And, not all of it works, but some of it does, and that's always that's always fun to do. Um, I also teach as well, so I've got a really fortunate position to be an artist in residence at school. So I'm able to teach part of the week and then uh, carry on with my practice for the rest of the week. Uh, and I also supplement that with with workshops as well, which I really enjoy doing. Uh, teaching for me is a fundamental part of my own artistic practice. I think it lends itself really well to me as an artist also growing. Um, through lots of lots of different ways of interacting with other artists and, and hopefully learning things that way too. So um, yeah, so that's that's a bit me about my practice. I've got lots going on and I'm always trying to learn to net new techniques and things and finding time to explore. Um, um, and in terms of advice to give my younger self, well, I think I think the obvious one for me is always to try and stay true to what you believe in. And I know that's easier said than done. Uh, there's lots of ups and downs in the road. Um, take the rough with the smooth almost you know um and i think one other thing as well is not to be too obsessed with trying to make your work appeal to galleries and to, to collectors and things i think if your work's good enough and i think if you're fortunate enough to get people to see it then then it should work for it it should speak for itself um, and hopefully if you're lucky enough that people will like your work for what it is um i think if you go down the route of trying to appeal to a certain audience that that for me in particular wouldn't make me enjoy what i do um so I think that's one thing I'll try and teach my, tell my, my younger self anyway. Um, uh, I, in terms of using, using unconventional mediums and techniques, um, I work in quite an unconventional way. I, I tend to almost work with two hands. So I'm kind of ambidextrous without ever realizing it. Um, I work with what's called a painting wedge, uh, in one hand and my left hand. And then with my right hand, my writing hand, I use my brush. So I kind of constantly use two things at once. Um, but I also have a, a, a other different tool to our scrape paint across the surface. I, I have a rule, a sort of a ruling tool, 
that allows me to create straight lines because I'm very much interested in shape and line and and to create, using that to help me create interesting marks and keep my, uh, uh, things fresh and energetic in my practice my painting um so I'm, I'm always using different tools i use oil predominantly um, i don't like using acrylic i like how oil is almost like painting with butter but um i use it in a really thin way so i dilute it down with uh, liquid and linseed oil and it creates a bit of a concoction to thin the paint but also ret whilst still retaining its kind of color um and i try and stick to sort of artist quality paints at least for key kind of colors that i use to try and make sure that they punch in create um um, good dynamic paintings because I think if I use lesser quality paint it can kind of tell um, so I try to invest in that if I can um, and in terms of music and things I do in the studio well I, I kind of often listen to podcasts um, and, and I find that they're quite a nice way for me to switch off but when, when I'm actually painting in particular it depends what mood I'm in really but I'll often listen to music I, I'm quite interested in electronic music so I listen to a lot of that to sort of get me going but it's one of those things where something depends on mood I'm in, really. Um, and I use, I often sort of use that to help me. Um, in terms of the best reaction that someone's had to my artwork, well, I'm lucky enough that people like my work enough to invest in it and collect, in, collect it and, and purchase it. So in some cases, at least. So that, that's always a really, really nice honour to have. And I'm really lucky that that's the case uh, with some of my paintings. Um, I think it's always nice when someone who... You know, invest their hard earnings into something that you do and, and that they can see something that is either personal to them or that they they they, they like about your work visually sometimes often actually they, they don't really know the place that it's located in they're not interested in that they're just interested in the picture because it reminds them of something in particular perhaps or that they just like it for what it is um, other times they do like the place and they want something from that city or that town that they're from or that they've visited in the past so there's various different reasons why people like my work and but I'm just lucky enough if that happens in any case um, and I think also what's nice is that uh, it's something that I've made that I feel is is worthwhile making so it's something that I've seen in a vision that I've um, had that I'm lucky enough that someone else also can see interest and beauty in it perhaps or you know in some ways that that, that kind of shared vision is is related in some ways um, so I think I'm lucky enough in that sense. Um, but um, I think I think I'm I'm trying to just make sure that my work's not necessarily a literal copy of a place, but it's more an interpretation of a place. So it's like a snapshot or or a construction in some ways of a location, as opposed to a literal representation of it. Um, so hopefully that's explained a little bit about my practice and that some of the images shown sort of show how I work and show my work in different stages and give you an idea of, of what I'm about. Um, if you have any questions, please do contact me. Um, and I'm always happy to sort of share my practice with people and talk to people about their artworks and my artworks. And, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, thank you very much for listening and uh, take care. Bye bye.